When it comes to heroes and all the characters they add into the game, there's no shortage of a bunch of them being pretty good or just really mediocre, sometimes to the point where people question why a unit is specifically good or specifically bad. And I talked about this a while back with the characters that got into the game treated pretty poorly comparative to how they were in their main lines. But now I want to do the complete opposite. Characters that had no chance or were just extremely mediocre in their own entry, becoming pretty good into Fey. This is a history of characters that became better in Heroes. Now, one thing that I want to preface is that comparisons between something like Fey and any mainline is always going to be kind of tricky, given that they're pretty different, all things considered. But the main goal is still going to remain the same of what degree of good were they in the mainline versus what degree of good were they in Fey. And the biggest things to take out of this between the two is that Fey has non-existent recruitment time, so anything related to availability is pretty much a non-factor. Same thing with the resources, where in the mainline you have something that's a lot more limited versus what's essentially unlimited resources, but that's just wholly dependent on all sorts of factors. But one of the biggest things I think that comes into play between the two is that Fey is constantly changing. And I mean to a point where sometimes a unit just ages into a niche. Mainlines are pretty much static in that regard, but because the game is constantly updating and changing, I find that the best approach to this list would be limiting it to their debuts in Fey. This would also exclude any potential refines that they did end up getting, and I think that's just more of a different topic entirely because refines have raised individual peaks of many units, some to a massive degree at points, but I think that's just better saved for another video. I find that it keeps it more grounded that way. Speaking of ground rules, I guess. I, I didn't know how to tr uh, transition that. We're going to do a few things. It's going to be first on debut version because there are a lot of characters that have multiple versions. A lot of them tend to be seasonal, but there are some points where it's maybe like legendary or some other gimmick that, you know, they exist and it's pretty much just more alts. I, I want to keep it a lot more simple. First on debut version. I'm also not going to consider any of the NPCs or seasonals because the former is way more difficult to scale, I feel. I feel like you're not going to be able to scale something like Brigand Boss in Shadows of Valentia versus Brigand Boss in Fey, but I mean, I guess the argument could be made that they're both pretty bad. <laughs> and the latter defies all logic because putting on a silly costume means that you're suddenly a hundred times stronger than your base version. So yeah, I'm not going to count those. And the only other thing is just purely for distinction purposes. If there are characters from multiple entries such as Tellius or have generation time skip aspects about it, or just some other variant regarding them, such as three houses, they will be repped based on what it says or presents itself as. So with all that in mind, we may as well get to the most obvious first character on the list, Nino. Nino from her mainline is one of those recruits that you would get later into the game, but doesn't really make the best impression given that she doesn't really have a lot of stats going for her, on top of the fact that she isn't properly trained when you get her, so she's just remarkably way worse comparatively to any other mage you probably have trained. And if you did want to get her going, you would have to use a lot of your individual resources and time to really make that going, not to the point where she'd even end up being better than a lot of your best ones you have available. And Faye, that's not really an issue, mostly because resource requirements aren't really there when it comes to the game, although that is more on the hypothetical, do you have unlimited money and resources, although granted you don't really need that much to get going since she is a demote. One of the biggest differences even beyond that though is the fact that in Fey she has really good offenses, at least by Gen 1 standards. Back in Gen 1 or just Book 1 in general, the stat lines for a lot of units were so all over the place that it left a lot of them pretty much not functioning at times, even when it comes to modern inheritance, even when compared to modern demotes. Nino, however, coming into the game with a base attack of 33 and 36 speed, at least by that point in time, was very rare, although not the most hyper-optimized, was still incredibly good for any Gen 1 unit, at least of that kind. And because the standards of Fey were a lot different when it came to what was good and what wasn't, really the biggest attribute that she did have going for her was the fact that she just had a lot of 
speed and a good amount of attack, especially when paired with a Grand Blade that she came with. And while I definitely wouldn't have said she was the most meta thing ever, it definitely was a step up from not really that great or useful from her mainline to actually pretty competent for a demo. Although I would say when it came to what made a unit good or bad back in way earlier Fey, it definitely felt a lot more straightforward as did you have a good PRF and did you have good stats because a lot of the time that's kind of what you needed for the most part and Carla was just that although the standards between what made FE7 Carla good versus Faye Carla was pretty much at the bottom of the barrel because if you wanted to use Carla you had to train up Bartray to a point where you could fight her in the arena in Hector hard mode in one of the last chapters in the game and she was not that good but I think it was just more for novelty purposes I would assume just because they needed to connect whatever from FE7 to FE6. Even so, she just wasn't really that good, so pretty much any addition to Faye was probably going to be automatically better, but she was pretty good, mostly because she had really good stats and a PRF that had true damage and slaying, so she could just naturally hit pretty hard for the most part. And really, when you think about it, there's a pretty good amount of infantry swords that kind of translate well from their main lines to Faye. And I think a lot of it just boils down to, what does this new god sword do in Faye? Because power creep is kind of crazy. Although they may not have even been bad in their main lines either but their transition into Faye was just so much more impactful you got stuff such as marita ira and lucia although lucia from radiant dawn really wasn't that great at least marita and ira were okay but not to the extent of they were just super dominant comparatively in Faye, though that was a whole different story marita when she came out was probably the de facto god sword for a good while because she was one of the few units that could run both dodge and no follow-up in the game, which essentially was the bread and butter combo for a lot of units way back then, mostly because you were able to not only secure your own doubles in a period of time where follow-up prevention was actually good, but then you also had damage reduction properties on top of being the fastest unit in the game at her peak. She was able to tank a lot of stuff for the most part. You also had Ira on the opposite side of the spectrum where she could pretty much just nuke anything at her peak, mostly because of Ragnar Astra just scaling off her speed by 40% which even back then was incredibly good. You paired that up with a Slaying Edge and Wrath and she could just hit you extremely hard with a Regnal Astra, sometimes to the point where she's one-shotting stuff in an archetype that's just very much built to mess her up specifically. She was that good at dealing damage. And then as for Lucia, this was probably one of the most unorthodox cases of a unit coming into the game with probably the most meta dominance going behind her back for probably about a year. Her whole gimmick essentially revolved around nullifying a bunch of stuff. She had null C disrupt, null follow up, and null specials, which was the bread and butter for pretty much everything going around her. Where a lot of units did depend on dealing damage in order to get around damage reduction stuff or just dealing damage in general, she completely nullified that. And all these also applied to herself, which means that she couldn't use specials either, but she could take advantage of some of the properties of a special as long as they are charged, which meant that she could get even stronger by proxy. And I wouldn't say she was unkillable, but it was definitely getting to a point where most units really could not deal with her. And you had some units that were faster and could make the case of outspeed her and just deal with it. But those were so few and far between that it really did not mean anything at the end of the day for her because she could easily just whiff off most damage, heal it back, and pretty much just never die. This also didn't take into account that she nullifies any sort of support that isn't visible buffs or bonuses, which meant that she could get even stronger while also simultaneously making it even more difficult for the foe if they did not come prepared. And usually for those types of teams, you would try the front loader with as much support as possible on the visible front so that she could become even more unkillable. And really to hammer it in with her specifically, they had to introduce a whole new line of skills just to deal with her. And now it's so common for everybody to have damage reduction piercing that percent damage reduction effects aren't really that good anymore. Although they can be useful at their own points in time. Although most of these just boil down to being pretty decent combat units. What if we took units that were designed for combat in their main lines and threw them over and made them support in Fey? And that's how you get an easier transitional period between a main line and Fey because supports in Fey don't age as fast as combat units. We'll get brand new combat units lickety split even within the same month at some points. When it comes to support, sure there's power creep support, 
but some support doesn't automatically become bad just because the newer support ends up doing a lot more although it does greatly depend on what exactly they do even so some units such as noah citrine and isadora come to mind when it comes to pretty good transitions from their main lines in the fey mostly because of their supportive capabilities noah i wouldn't say is as good nowadays but when he came out he was probably one of the better options we had for supports when he was paired with an ally he granted dodge bonus neutralization off the foe and because he was a cavalry unit he could also run stuff such as infantry speed tactic which made his supportive capability so much better and this is where we started seeing skills that just had natural damage reduction piercing built into them but it didn't become so common that quickly so noah's dodge effect could still be relatively useful so you also had the bonus neutralization effect which was still always going to be very very helpful no matter what and if you were to pair this with a better support unit such as citrine then you could spread his buffs even further he was one of the few units at the time that could just provide that many buffs at a relatively easy level and because citrine also exists as the unit who could spread around all those buffs it made it even stronger although i would definitely attribute that more to citrine just because her support is even stronger than noah's give her any visible buff that isn't pathfinder or extra movement she could spread it around to every single ally within her range which is incredibly strong and on her release was probably one of the most useful things that came out of that banner and even to this day it's still relatively solid to spread around those kinds of buffs especially on some maps and seasons that make it so much easier to take advantage of somebody like citrine although i would like to add that citrine's damage output was actually really good in and of itself because she could also pulse herself and she could aoe with true damage essentially mean that if you did need another nuke to take care of something or that her support was just kind of running out in terms of effectiveness you could just have her enter combat instead which was extremely useful and while i wouldn't say she was on the same level as citrine isadora i think is pretty underrated for a support just because she's able to give bonus doubler and foe penalty doubler to any sort of character she assists which you know when you go back to the main line she was just decent enough combat unit for the most part nothing spectacular they kind of axed her combat for the most part and just turned her into pure support which i mean maybe that's still cheating when it comes to the relative transition between the games but she is pretty good support so i'd be hard pressed not to include her on the list just because she does accomplish what she needs to do at a pretty decent rate and i think that's what you're going to see a lot of the time when it comes to units that go from a main line to this game that end up becoming supportive a lot of the time they just end up up eclipsing whatever they were in their mainline games but that's not always the case at least it just mostly depends on what they end up bringing to the table because sometimes their support really isn't that great either although if we're talking about one of the best support units of their time and so even to this day you can look no further than valoria who in her mainline game was very much just combat unit whatever she did it was probably decent or good in fates you bring her into fey she is one of the best gale force enablers in the game because she gives two pulses to an ally she supported with and herself meaning that getting any sort of gale force strategy off the ground was extremely easy and while we definitely have way more power crept versions lying around the game now she still accomplishes her job extremely well and is one of the better enablers that even to this day for any of those types of teams although i at least would like to mention that her combat's not even that bad either so maybe there is some correlation at the end of the day you do have other hybrid nuke tank supports such as veil vale, who i would argue her issue stemmed from her recruitment time rather than her performance as a unit because she isn't even that bad in engage it's just that you barely have any time to use her given that she is the last character you recruit in fey again it's not really that big of an issue because recruitment times are pretty much non-existent in that game veil vale serves as a pretty decent combat unit and support because of her built-in scale effect that also affects allies' combat, meaning that you could theoretically shut down a lot of specials if the foe doesn't have any other workarounds around it. But we do have effects and skills that can push that limit. Even so, scowl support is just inherently going to be really strong for any sort of tank because it does shut off specials off the foe. And because she could also take advantage of it herself, there are times where she's able to take out specific units that would really like to get their special off just to be really good. And lastly, when it comes to support, 
because I don't want to keep adding support onto this as much as I can. We have Flane, who at her peak was probably one of the strongest supports in the game because she granted a flat amount of damage reduction to any ally within her range. And this was at the period of time where piercing any sort of damage reduction was very, very difficult. Not only because the availability of getting around damage reduction was limited, but also because the ones that could do it weren't exactly the best at their job a lot of the time. So being able to shave off a lot of damage just because she exists on the field was very good. And while I wouldn't say she's great now because everything has damage reduction piercing, she was at her time one of the best supports in the game. And considering she's pretty much just your second healer bot more or less when you get her in three houses, not bad by any means, but nothing super spectacular. I think this is definitely a step up in terms of support. And you know what? That's definitely more of a cross comparison comparatively to anything that's just combat to support. Although in three houses, everybody at the end of the day is a wyvern rider. So uh, I don't know how much that really holds up. And the last three units that I want to talk about on this list are Python, Yuri, and Hector. Yuri is probably going to be the one that stands at the most amongst these three because he was pretty good in three houses. But going from three houses where he was pretty good to Faye, where he was arguably the strongest unit in the game, that's a pretty big stark contrast, I feel. What made Yuri and Faye really strong on debut was a combination of both what his weapon did and his PRF skill foul play, which allowed him to swap with any ally in the knight movement position, you know, like chess. This made his utility extremely good because he also had the ability of not only being a good combat unit, but he could be an extremely good support unit for something like Aetherates because of the swap. Okay, yeah, I said no more support, but this is a hybrid. So uh, I guess this is technically different. I don't know. I'm still counting it. And it was just a relatively good effect all around when it came to pretty much every single game mode. But the biggest thing about him is that because he was a dagger unit and infantry, he could take on the role of a support unit if he didn't want to be a combat unit. But I'll get to his combat in a second because that's also definitely worth highlighting. His big whole thing is that he could disable any sort of Aetherite's trap on the field with Disarm Trap in his B slot, swap an ally in so that they can take care of whatever they need to take care of, and then you're pretty much in business. And because, again, he's infantry, he could charge up a lot of stuff for Gale Force strats, which is mostly boiling down to infantry pulse. But even so, his support was pretty good. Although, I would definitely say the highlight was much of his combat because at a time where we didn't have cancer control in a game where they were starting to introduce Kanto into the game, giving a unit that had permanent three movement and Kanto two on a ranged weapon meant that he could pretty much hit and run everything in the game with very, very little issue. And because his damage output was extremely strong as well, he ended up becoming one of the most obnoxious units to deal with in the game, but so much so to the point where he was arguably one of the best units in the game for a good period of time as well. You could argue maybe not top one, because there are a lot of other characters that did a lot of other stuff, but he was at least amongst the best of their kind. Even if it came to an offensive role, he was so good just because he could easily get in and get out with no issue whatsoever or any repercussions. And then you go to somebody like Python, it's a bit less impressive comparatively, but the big thing with him, similar to the likes of Nino and a lot of the other characters back in the early days of Faye, is that he had a good stat line to take advantage of. In Shadows of Valencia, he was pretty much okay for the most part. I never found him to be that impressive but you know you could always do the same pitchfork whatever if you really want to but that's a whole different discussion of its own for Faye, all he had to have was a pretty good speed stat decent enough attack and he had pretty good bulk in his defense meaning that he was a solid pick especially for a team out for any sort of cav line because he had the offensive pressure and defenses to deal with a lot of stuff that he could easily just ram into although it wasn't always perfect as most units aren't it was definitely something that he could easily do and it had a niche that he himself carved out. And as for Hector, I would say it's a similar vein to the likes of Yuri, where they're decent enough in their main game, although I would definitely say Hector wasn't exactly crazy crazy in FE7, and the low movement coupled with his lopsided defenses and relatively late promotion for the most part wasn't exactly the most helpful thing regardless. But going from FE7 Hector to Fey Hector, where his whole thing is that he could counterattack regardless of the foe's range, even though that was an inheritable skill, with our mods having quick repose 2 built into 
it so that he could get a guaranteed follow-up no matter what meant that his damage output was extremely consistent on top of just being a pretty good tank on his own at least relative to his time it only got better and i'm not going to really consider it for the reason why he's here but it's worth mentioning that the legendary version pretty much did what he did but a bit better and better in the sense that og was still extremely good because by that point he could not only prevent every foe from doubling but he could still double himself with the absolutely coveted double quick repost wary fighter that's just what they made their legendary into but i digress he ended up becoming pretty good as a combat unit to the point where they didn't even refine him but that's a whole different discussion on its own and i think i already talked about it in the video so that's where i'm gonna end it here i'm sure there are a lot of other units that can make a similar case to the ones i listed here but these definitely felt the most stand out ish when it came to their debuts in fey there's definitely a lot more units you could absolutely consider when it comes to getting their refines at least because a lot of them ended up becoming really good but i think that's definitely a lot more of a different discussion than what this is really trying to accomplish so if you think i missed anybody or there was somebody absolutely worth mentioning let me know down below and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to like and subscribe and until next time i'll see you later